Hello, my beautiful creative friends. How are you today? I am just so excited because I love using lace, but I also love using things from around the house in general. So I love using things from around the house and I love using lace. I've accumulated a lot of lace. I would love to know if everybody else have accumulated over the years, but I've been in this, like doing this for so long. I have so much lace. Either I bought or people sent me, or I used to do with scrapbooking cards, whatever it is. Any, if you're a crafter and you have a lot of lace, you know, sitting in a box, this is the perfect opportunity. And we're gonna create this spread right here, uh, but we're gonna create it, um, in another page, which is in the same book. So I'm going to be creating this from scratch on another page over here. I actually partially started the page just so it doesn't take that long to do everything um, because um, I just really wanted to, you know, get this like, get this like, you know, done in a limited amount of time. Uh, right after me, my friend Tiffany is going to be going live and also show you a different way of doing texture. And so that's why, and right after her, it will be Ingrid. So that's why I wanted to make sure that everybody is like, you know, staying in there, like we have enough time to, to do all of them. So when I, I'm talking about lace, okay, it could be any type. This is called a lace doily. Okay. Actually, I'll show you a, um, the actual one that I used it. This is a full version of it. Okay. And then there is this one. You can probably get some, at, I, I listed some below from Amazon and from Etsy, but you can actually get them probably at a flea market or anything like that. Some of these that I have actually, they're beautiful and they were, um, some of them, like I collected that my grandmother after she passed away after me a few years ago, I've been collecting them. And what I did is I kept them because I knew that I could incorporate them into my art journals, into my artwork. And what would be what I, what would be great is that that way I can include her story. I was very close to my grandmother, so I can include her in my artwork. And that feels very special and meaningful to me. Now I'm gonna be using matte gel and because lace is a little bit thicker than paper, I know last week I spoke about, um, you know, gluing paper and that you should be using things like soft fluid acrylic. You can also use this matte gel that I'm using right now, which is the Liquitex matte gel. You can also use it for paper as well, but it's a little bit thicker than the fluid one. And the reason why I like it is because it really glues, um, glues, things that are a little bit thicker things like fabric is much easier to glue with this so you see as you can see i cut the doily in half and i am just gluing it to the side of the page so i already glued this side okay as you can see and i am now gluing this other side now this gel is still soft it's still considered like a soft gel but it is um it is the consistency is a little bit thicker because I always say the thicker you go in the material, the thicker you want the gel to be. Now trim comes in so many different like pieces and like beautiful design. This is like what they use for clothing and stuff like that. So I have this one. I can't tell you where I got it or how long it's been since I have it, but I just love um, how it looks. And I thought this would be perfect for the center of my design and what I'm creating and I'm basically, hold on, I just wanna measure it. So what I'm creating is I'm creating a, a little like, almost like a sideways, I wanna say a sideways uh, dream catcher. I don't know, that's what it seems to me, but it truthfully can be, doesn't, you don't have to really call it anything, okay? It could be any type of name of anything you want. <laughs> so, I want it to be this way because they kind of fit into each other. And that I think looks really nice. Now I have this trim. This is an old trim that I got when I was on the design team with Prima. I just love how pretty it is. Um, so this can be added as well. As long as, and also like this trim, for example, I, that you can actually cut in half. It's too thick to have it all in one piece, but I cut a little piece of it in, in like this. So I think I want to put this one here. Let's see what other ones do I have? Oh, I love this one. So this one is so pretty. Let's cut a piece of it. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just gluing these to the to the background 
to create a kind of like lines going across because that's what's going to create movement and it's super um easy to do um thank you okay so i was going to talk about it in a second but um uh, Tiffany got ahead of it, which is thank you very much. I was going well, to talk about it in a second about this amazing summit that I'm doing. But I first want to glue these pieces because I don't want, um, I don't want it to, um, you know, like I want to make sure that I can talk about this while I'm drying so I can concentrate on what I'm doing. So, yeah. So these flowers, I think I'm going to glue here. I need four flowers. So I'm just laying it out just to show you like kind of the design that I'm doing. And then after that, I will, I will, I will like glue them all together. So what I'm doing, if you can see, I am creating a shorter, a longer piece in the middle and a shorter piece, shorter pieces that kind of create this kind of triangle effect. Oh, no, no worries, Tiffany. It's all good. I was going to share it anyway. So it's all good. Um, so oh, I love this. This one is really pretty as well. So um, all good. All good. I can't, I, I can't wait to tell you about this really exciting, um, this really exciting, sorry, I'm trying to, I just realized that my people are going to call me and I don't want people to call me. Um, I just, this really exciting uh, event that I'm doing and it's called transcendence spiritual and art so basically like what it is is we're connecting your art like I'm going to be doing a class there where I'm going to be connecting my art and it's how to connect it to your heart to your soul and to bring that spirituality into it and I'm going to be creating these um well, I glue, I can tell you about it. So I'm going to be creating a deck of cards, an inspirational deck of cards, which I will show you in a minute. And it's a really, really great thing. There is 27 teachers and we're all going to be teaching a different style of our, our own style, basically. But the key to this, and that's what it's like, This it's, it's a summit. So basically you can sign up to all the classes. To, the key to it is, is in the first few days, it is free. But if you want to basically keep all the videos for yourself and learn at your own pace, then it's $55 to just join. It's actually really inexpensive for 27 classes, which is 28 classes, sorry, 27 other teachers. That would be the 28. So um, you can first sign up for free and see if you like it and see how it is. And you just have to fill out that a form that, they, and then they will send you the first link. The thing with it is that you're going to be getting like every. There's only a five. It's a five day event. So basically, you're um, you're going to be doing it like on. Uh, it's June June twentieth to June twenty fifth. So what happens? I'm trying to concentrate on two different things. It's very difficult. I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time. So what's nice is that every day you're going to get like five different classes released. So if you need to work at your own pace, I would suggest for you to just yeah pay the $55 and just have them. It's like a VIP pass that you can basically like create whenever you want. You don't have to you know, do it per day because once... Um, once they're released, they're only there for a little bit amount of time and then they're taken away. So what happens is if you wanted to go back to anything, you might need to then sign up at the same time. So you can sign up at any time. You don't have to do it right now, but it's a really good thing. And I'm going to show you in a second what I make with it, because I feel like uh, what I want to bring to you guys, OK, it's which is really important for me, is to bring a type of inspiration where it helps you in times where you cannot create. It helps you in times when you're just, you know, just like uh, going through something in life and things are either difficult or, you know, you need to like, you art is not always a priority, even though we want it to be. So this kind of helps us kind of connect to that. Now, as you can see, I'm just gluing everything and you do not need to seal the lace. It's not necessary to do meaning I don't need to add a lot of glue on top. Oh, sorry, gel. You just need to, um, the only thing you need to do is just make sure that all the pieces are glued underneath, okay? Because we're going to cover it with gesso. So the last piece of it is this. And I think it's too long. So if the piece is too long, 
you can go ahead and cut it. Okay, and there you go. So now I have both sides, but the only reason I did it like, like I did, I'm gonna glue this one here. The only reason I did it um, only on one side is because I wanted to make sure that I have enough time for everything. Now, I noticed that, for example, there's some little holes here. So I'm gonna add a couple of these flowers which I did on the other side. I don't think I did it in the other journal. I don't think I even used this flower trim because it was all tangled up and I finally got to, got, I finally untangled it. So I was able to um, use it, but I'm gonna glue it here. There we go. And I mean, anything goes, you can really use any type of, um, you can use any type of lace that you might have. And thank you, Michelle. I'm so glad to hear. Like, uh, that's exactly like what I, like is important. Like, it's like if if this if that video, the neurographic art, help you, then I just want to bring you new avenues on how you can help yourself for your well being. And that's what I've I've noticed that many of you have wanted. And this this summit that I'm talking about, this transcendence summit is really important because it will do that for you. And even if you're not, even if you don't watch every single one of the, of the, the episode, uh, the classes, you will still get something that might, you know, you never know who you're going to meet, meet or who you're going to, what you're going to learn that can help you with your, with your well being. So I just really feel that it's really worth to just check it out. Even if you sign up, even if you don't pay for it, even if you just do the free version, it's still like amazing for you to just do that and really gain that, that knowledge and that, that connection with your, that you can find with yourself, if that makes sense. Okay. I don't know if that, I'm making sense at all, but <laughs> I'm trying to make sense if that, if, if it's okay. So now I need to dry this really well. This side obviously is already dry because I did it before. And I'm going to do this side. So when I'm drying, I am going to like, this is what I was going to show you, but I can show you. This. So many years ago, maybe not many, but two years ago, I don't know if you guys watched this video where I made this box. I altered a tea box. Okay. Um, and, um, and what I did is that, as I said, I have made, I'm going to put this like this. Hopefully I don't burn my page because I want to show you. You guys can hear me, right? Even though this dryer is on, it's very low battery. So here are the cards. So what I made is I made this deck of cards, which is really, I will, but I show you, I don't show you how to make the box. That's a video on my channel that you can watch yourself. Oops. Did I just knock that off? Okay. I hope you can still hear me. So the tea box is really nice, but this is what I did. I basically did a deck of cards. And what is the deck of cards is basically there's 30 cards. They're inspirational cards that I show you how to alter and how to do in many different colors. You will choose the colors. But what's special about them is that they have something. Each one of them has something in the back. So, for example, they might have something like... Um, a quote or a prompt. So for example, this one has, it's a Tony, Tony, oh my God, I can't say his name. Don't quote me on that. Uh, Robbins, which uh, the prompt is as the first layer to a new project. So for example, let's say you're in a, in a situation where you are, you just don't know, like, you know, what to create and you really feel like you're, you know, not in a good place, then you just do that. But what I like doing is kind of like looking at it as like, kind of like, like, um, uh, not, you don't know which card you're going to get, okay? So you basically lay them all out or close your eyes and just pull a card. So let's say, well, maybe I'll close my eyes because I know how they look like. So let's say I pull this one and I just look in the back and it says, nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I am possible. So for example, what I like about this is that you, if you could use this as kind of like using something that... Um, creating a, a deck of cards for yourself that will help you connect uh, yourself with your heart and soul. So when you don't know what to create, when you're in a situation where uh, you don't know, you maybe just need an inspirational word. For example, let's pick another one, okay? Let's say you need an inspirational, like even a design or a color or the word inspire. Look at that. I'm talking about inspiration. Um, and then basically you get uh, like the word inspire or like, for example, something like, like the serenity prayer, which man, you know, I really often refer to it. Uh, what other one I love. Um, 
So it says, art is the highest form of hope. So share your art knowledge with someone who might need it. So this is what I mean. Like, it's just, um, it's just, yeah, it's got the affirmations and things. So you're going to create your own specific deck of cards. Basically, like, uh, something that will connect to you. And you can choose the colors. I just show you how to do this, but it's going to be you doing it yourself at your own time. So that's what I said. I mean, you could like, it's it's not a long class, but what I mean by if, if you do want all these classes, there's some really, really inspirational classes there. My friend um, Marina, she is like really talented. She's in it as well. And she just created a beautiful canvas. I think it's a canvas, actually. I don't know. I just saw the picture. I'm assuming it's a canvas. So if there is every person is has something valuable to give. Now, if you're not into, like, um, spiritual things, you know, like, you know, it's okay. You don't have to love every single class. I mean, there's 27 class classes, 28 classes, and it's only $55. So think about it, right, in the way of, like, it's really like, even if you don't like one or two of the classes, you're still like, you're paying like so little for that. And you will end on the last thing. I don't want to talk about it anymore just because I want to do it with this. Even if you, if I can reach one person for free, I'm okay with that. I'm truly, truly okay. So please don't sign up just for that. But if you do sign up, I thank you because that helps me uh, for the, basically like helps me for my time if that makes sense okay so anyways that was it now we're dry with this thing and i talked enough about this amazing event that's coming up so we're ready for the next stage and the next stage is for me to put gesso now this we want to make sure that we cover the whole thing with gesso and the reason why we want to cover it with gesso is because we want to kind of create an even surface for everything and this is really an important step because you could paint over the lace itself. It's not a problem, but the point of the point of painting over it, the, the point of leaving it the way it is, is that the lace, because it's fabric, it's going to soak up a lot of the paint. So what gesso does is that it gives you the opportunity to have it, um, to have an even surface on everything and kind of protects the lace so it doesn't stain it. And you will see why it's so important when you're adding paint. Now, today I will not be using magicals, even though I thought about it. But I really wanted something more permanent, something like acrylic paints, because acrylic paints, liquid acrylic paints, which is what I'm using today, can give you the same kind of effect as watercolors, but even better. Okay. So... I'm going to be covering now everything with the white gesso. I'm actually going to do, and I'm going to put this over here because it's much easier than having, I have a really big tub of white gesso. And make sure that you also cover the white, um, the white here. So you see how I'm covering it every, everything really well. Also, the other reason why white gesso works really well, it's because, um, it's because, some of the lace is different, like all the lace colors are different. So it really helps to kind of give an even coat and a base to your background. And it really helps with, you know, kind of having it all the same color. Okay. So I'm just going to cover this. And I think I am done. Yay. I'm going to dry everything really well because... You want to make sure that you don't get, otherwise when I put the paint, it's going to get like white stuff on it. So there are so many things that you can use from your home that can create really cool design, texture, 3D layers. Just the possibilities are endless. Are endless. And I've been trying slowly, slowly to introduce them. I don't know if you remember last week, I used magazines and I don't know, people just went bonkers for that. Like they were like so impressed. I mean, I didn't think I did anything that nobody, it wasn't anything new, but I think just showing you that there's so many different ways to do things that is like so important. It really helps with like, um, you know, create, create creativity. And there's just so many things around the house. So I am going to be bringing you more of these. I am noticing that a lot of people are enjoying like these lives where you can learn how to create. And anything that you create on this art journal, 
you can do on a canvas, you can do on a card, you can do on a scrapbook page, basically anything goes. So it's really like that easy. You can, you don't have to like, you don't have to do much. You can just gather things from around your house and find, find them and do them and put them on, glue them on. So yeah, um, just checking. So it's pretty much dry to the touch, but as you can see, I'm still getting some of it. So I don't want, I want to make sure that um, it's fully, fully dry. When you're, when you're drying, it's written. Also, this is a good thing to do is make sure that you're always moving the dryer back and forth. You don't want to stay on the same spot. The dryer gets really, really hot, and then it can burn the gesso or burn the page or burn something in your page, and you don't want that, okay? So, all right. Okay, so I think we're pretty much dry. Yeah, okay. So now we're going to introduce the, the paint, sorry, as I'm saying that, and I'm going to be using different types of liquid acrylics. Any liquid acrylic, that is, I mean, I you want better quality acrylics, but it doesn't have to be. It's just some of the tones of some of the companies that they make acrylic, fluid acrylics, are just, they just look different. And then if you bought something, let's say, at a dollar store or at Walmart, okay? So Golden and Deco Media, Deco Art Media is one of the ones I go to. I also have this Da Vinci. I have no idea where I got this from. Honestly, it's really old, so I don't even know if it still exists, but it's a uh, Prussian blue. So you could like even get that in another color. So I have things like Stalo Turquoise, Turquoise Cobalt, and Turquoise Stalo. Okay. And the color that I'm going to introduce today is called. Um, it's called Carmine Red, and it's actually a Finaver Art Alchemy Liquid Acrylic, which I really love. So that one is going to be, and I listed them all below in the description along with all the products. So yeah, so you can just see, you can see them there. Um, uh, I'm using a heat gun. Sorry, Kelly. Yes, I'm using a heat gun, like a heat tool. Yeah, the Rangers, just really, really dirty. <laughs> so it doesn't look like it. And it's an older one, so it's white. I think they make them in black now. Okay, so I have a little palette over here. I'm going to move things sideways a little bit so you can see. And uh, what I like doing, oh yeah, you can see it all. Okay, perfect. So um, I'm gonna put a little bit of these colors here in my palette. As you can see, they're already from last time. They're there from last time. This is the lightest color, which is the turquoise cobalt. Um, then I'm gonna put the, Stalo turquoise, I think it's this one. And I, I swear these last forever and ever. I only put like a little bit and they last forever and ever and ever. There's the Prussian blue and the Stalo turquoise is the darkest one. It's a different company, so it's just a little bit darker. And I'll show you what I need what to want to do with that. And I'll don't put to the red one yet, just because I want to um, show you first the blues, okay? So I love creating, oh, my page just got stuck. I love creating um, like a patina effect in my background. And sorry, I just felt it's a little bit wet here. So, so um, I usually go for these blues, but I really wanted to include the red as well. Oh, and I forgot, I also am gonna use this quinacridone Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold, which is kind of like an orangey color, okay? Sorry, this little corner wasn't ready yet. Okay, so as I said, I can't I can share and say enough that you really need to, um, you really need to um, dry everything well. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water. So although they're liquid acrylics, I want them even more liquidy, okay? And I'm going to start adding them to my background and then I'm still going to dilute them even more so you want to kind of let them run down the page and I've done this technique before many times I mean I, if you've seen some of my lives or some of my videos I do this many times and uh, but it depends on what what you use that it will give you different effects so the acrylic paints they're different than the magicals because they're going to 
they're going to be drying much faster than the magic magicals. The magicals are watercolor, like they turn into kind of a watercolors. So they're way different than, than the acrylic paints. Okay. And I am the type of person who does add, like I'm heavy handed. And I think my friend Ingrid asked this last week in one of her lives. She says, are you heavy handed or are you light handed when you add things? Okay. And I think every person works the way they want to work with or they feel comfortable. And I find that I prefer adding more and then watering it down than adding less, if that makes sense. I think that has to do with my impatience. But you can see that as I'm adding the paint, it starts dripping in between the design and it looks so gorgeous. Now I'm gonna add the next dark color. And this dark color, I'm not gonna be adding everywhere, okay? So as the lighter colors, you're kind of adding in all places. And as you're getting with the darker ones, you kind of you wanna create like an over under effect. So some places will have them and some places will not. And then again, you add a little bit and then you, you do this, okay? There we go. There we go. So there we go. So you start seeing how everything is moving down. And it looks so pretty. Um, let me just make sure. Yeah, we're still good on time. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to add this one. This is the Prussian blue that I'm adding right now. Okay. And now they're not, as you can see, it starts to splatter here. And if that happens and you don't like how it looks, you can add. Uh, you can use, uh, whoops, that, no, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, you can add a baby wipe. You can use a baby wipe and wipe some of it off. Now, not more, most of it will not come off, but we're going to use a little trick at the end to kind of cover it and get rid of that, get rid of that, um, that splatter that happens when I use water. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit more. And this is like the darker one. And the darker I am now, I'm going to define my edges. Now, a lot of it is still staying white, and I do not want that. So I'm going to go back, and I'm, now I'm going to kind of add a little bit here. And that's okay to do. And that looks weird right now, right? But as soon as you add the water, it starts kind of melting away. And it just starts going down the, down the design. So you want to purposely do it now if you can get it to run from all the way from the top down the bottom that's great but i haven't been able to do that so because i haven't been able to do that i just tend to i start adding it in the middle now this uses a lot of water okay like literally a lot of water you need to really melt it Melted. I call it melt. It's not really melting. Dilute. That's the right word. Dilute. Okay. So I am one to, you see, you even want to make it all the way to the bottom without going over. Sounds like the price is right. Okay. So I want to add a little bit of darkness here and a little bit more, maybe even around the flowers. And I want to then dilute. Okay. Now, while it's still wet, okay, you want the blue to still be wet when I'm going to add this quinacridin gold. Okay. And the other one as well. But first, I'm going to do this. And why I say that is because when you mix the quinacridin gold, I'll do it like this, with the blue, it creates that patina effect. Okay, so it really helps with creating that patina. Oh my gosh, my hand is really shaky. I don't know why, but it creates a patina color, if that makes sense. So again, I'm going to, I'm adding it here and then I'm letting it melt. Let them I keep on saying melt, dilute. Okay, same with here. So the connect the the um, mix between the orange, orangey gold color and the blue that creates that greenish patina color. Okay, 
Now, if you like it just blue or just purple, you can choose any color for this, okay? You don't have to do the same colors I'm doing, okay? If you love purples and you love pinks or you love just purple and blue, then you go ahead and do that. I personally love patina effect. It's just one of my favorite effects. So I just tend to go through that as a lot. But again, you don't have to, you know, you can just choose to do a different color. You can do the same design with your own, with your own special colors, if that makes sense. Okay. So I want to add some of the carmine red. Now, originally I was going to just show you as how to do with just the one side, but I think I will have time to do both because I was going to just make the first side and have it um, and have the other one already done, but it's okay. It's all good. Okay, so now this is now turning a lot into patina, and I really want to have a little bit more of the of that reddish color kind of sneaking around, sneaking in here. So because of that, I'm going to let this kind of air dry a little bit while I start the other side. Now, if you're doing it, not if you don't want to air dry, let it air dry, you can definitely heat set it. But just because of time, I prefer going to the other side to just like starting this side of the page. So again, I'm going to start with the lighter color. And now I know what I'm doing, so I don't have to, or what you know what I'm doing, so I don't have to go that that slow with that. And let me just go here. Okay, so I just want to make sure that you guys can see it. Um, this is like really true. Let's move this away so that way you can see it really well. I can even bring this up, up over here while this dries. And just let's bring, let's just like add the turquoise everywhere, even this darker turquoise, and just let this dilute down the page. Dilute down the page, yeah. It's one of my favorite techniques. I know sometimes I feel like I'm doing, I repeat myself a lot because I'm doing the same thing, but you know what? It's not so much about the technique, but learning how to um, manipulate the different types of paint. So I've shown you this technique with, watercolors i've shown you this technique with magicals so today i am showing this technique with with the acrylics because it does make a difference you it like with the with this ones you with the acrylics you do have to work much faster okay acrylics tend to dry faster than watercolors so you want to make sure that you are uh you don't get it dry so let's see i'm putting it here like this, you want to make sure that it doesn't dry in this way because then you're going to get those brush strokes. And I don't want brush strokes, okay? I want to make sure that um, that you, I get like this like watercolor effect in the background. So, okay. I want to make sure that this reaches lower down. So I have to tilt the page. So this is why I'm tilting the page because I want to make sure that it reaches the bottom, right? I don't want it to like stay, all of it stay at the top. I want to be able to reach the bottom. Let me just add a little bit of water here. And oh gosh, maybe I should have done. Um, okay, so. I'm going to again. I love how it runs through the through the actual lace. It just looks so pretty. And I need to add more here. I feel like I haven't added enough. So there. Now it's like really running through. Okay. So now I'm going to add a little bit of the quinacridone azo gold. And maybe some here and some of it over here. And you're gonna see how I add, when I add the, the red, it will look so pretty. 
and I'm waiting first to. So, oh wow, that's, that's really dark, <laughs> but you're gonna see, I love this color, so it's okay. This is why water is my best friend and I just let it run down, okay? So I'm trying as much as possible. I'm avoiding this middle area, but I'm still be able to fix it. And you'll see why in a second, I'll tell you the different ways to do it, okay? Now I'm going to add a little bit of the red. Oh yeah, the, you're right, lace, you can find like dollar store lace, like lace at the dollar store. It actually is quite easy and they, quite cheap to find. So, okay, I really like this. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry a little bit. No dry, I'm gonna heat set it because I need to add some of the red and there's too much. So the, the combination of, of turquoise and orange red, okay, it's not something new. As I said, it's kind of like a, that patina effect. It's actually quite um, available in nature. You kind of see it in nature. Not in nature when, well, not exactly in nature, but when things get oxidized by nature. So it's kind of like that effect that you see that oxide coming, especially at the beach, which is my favorite place to go. Um, you see that oxide kind of coming through through the, um, how do you call this? It's coming through like anything that gets like oxidized by the sea salt, right? So that's where I think it's so cool. Um, not dry it. Need to dry. Yes, definitely would look amazing on a canvas. If you wanna make a canvas like that, I actually, originally I thought to do the, the design kind of like, in a vertical way, so it would look like a, it would look like a dream catcher coming down. But I, then I said, no, no, I want to do it in the opposite way. I want to do it in the other direction. So I just did it that way. But it would look amazing on a canvas, especially you can have so much texture and stuff. So that's good. It's, yeah, it's more dry. Okay, so let me add some more of the carmine red. And oh no, I still have some. Let's just water it down a little bit. Okay, so I really want this red. The red really makes a beautiful design and I want to bring it in a little bit more, kind of connect it all. So I want it to kind of come down, down here. So I'm, I'm helping it, okay? So sometimes you have to help the design. Let me add some water because I don't want it to stay in this way. Yeah. But it kind of creates that really cool shadow, okay? Get it? So like I'm kind of helping it. I know it's like, it, you know, but it does make it look natural, okay? I think the gesso is a little bit wet here in this one corner, so I'm trying to avoid. Um, yeah, this would be amazing for a sea theme. If you if you are making a sea theme, this would be amazing. And you could like include other things in it, okay? So, okay, this is nice. Okay, yeah, I'm like starting to like it. You see, like it comes together when you start adding more and more layers. It's just that sometimes uh, things are too wet. Now I'm going to, Add a little bit more of the blue. I want the blue to kind of go down the bottom all the way here, okay? But I am, as I said, I'm kind of helping it, okay? But it's gonna blend. So the water helps you blend it. Um, and a little bit of blue here. I kind of feel like it needs it, okay? And one more place that I feel it needs it. And it's at the edges, okay? So we are kind of kind of darken the edges to kind of create a border around it. So it kind of frames everything, okay? So 
yeah, that looks really good. Okay, just need to make sure that you don't get, you get it like a watery effect. You don't want it to look as if, um, how do you call this? As if it, there's lines everywhere. Sorry, that's what I was trying to say. Okay, oh, that looks good. Okay. Um, okay, let's go here. And now I'm going to do it, just finish the other side. So it's almost finished. This side, actually, I, I think I added more paint. So I think like it kind of like just went on its own down the page. And don't worry, I know the splatters are everywhere. We are going to fix that in a few minutes. Okay, so that I, now they're kind of connected. So the page goes from one side to the next, even though there's a white space there, okay? Um, the, the, the page is connected. That's what I meant to say. So I am working a little bit faster. Usually I would just like, you know, take my time. So when you're doing this, do it slowly. Don't have to do it as fast as I'm doing it. I'm just trying to finish up on time. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing this. So I want some of this carmine red to kind of come down here. Okay. The I find that the, the rusty looking part makes it looks as makes it look like the the rust is coming out of the shadows. So it's I don't know, I think it's cool. Um, I stuck the lace and you can watch, obviously you can watch this afterwards. Um, I stuck the lace with gel medium, matte gel medium. And it's not the fluid one. It's basically the regular matte gel. Okay. Now I'm going to dry this really, really well. And the reason why is because uh, I want to see once it's dry, if it needs any more color, first of all, or even at, while I'm drying, if I see that, for example, I want something darker, like a darker um, edge or like something like that, I can still do that, okay? So I will be able to tell, like this area was really wet with the gesso. So as you can notice, as you notice, there is like white here, a lot of white. Now white space is really great. What it does is that it helps you uh, turn your eye to either side of the page to where the focal point or the design is going is, is if you're like uh if you don't have any white space your eye doesn't know where to look okay so white space is really important i want to show you uh what to do with the middle and to cover first time uh, at first i covered like this i covered like the background like to make sure that i have it all like white because i really wanted that white space the white is what's doing is that it's enhancing the white space without covering anything else. So the gesso kind of blends a little bit into, into the other, into towards the lace or towards the colors. And it creates this really nice um, design. Now, hold on. So I'm just kind of covering it. I want to be able, to, I want to also keep the brush strokes to be in this direction. Okay, to make sure that I'm not, um, that I don't have these like weird lines going in different directions. And you can also use this to dry brush a little bit on top of the design. Now you have to make sure that it's dry. So that's the only thing, uh, like I'm trying to be careful because my design is not fully dry, but when you are doing this, as you can see, you're gonna get these like highlights, just a little bit. You only need a little bit, okay? And you're gonna, and especially, oops, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. And hold on, my paintbrush got dirty. So some of the areas, as I said, this is like really important to like, no, because you know what I mean? Like, I don't want you to go there and make the mistake that I just did. They'll have it like wet in the area, in these areas. And then when you're trying to dry brush on top, um, it ruins everything. Okay. So you just have to put, you just have to be a little bit careful with that. And the only reason that I am just, you know, like it's kind of stained is because some areas are just really, really wet, but it's, you don't have to add this part, but it just adds like a really nice um, kind of design to it. Okay. 
And once you dry this white gesso, you will see if you need a second coat. So and I feel like I need another layer of the white in some areas. So I'm just going to do that. And that's okay. So the white, the, the gesso really helps kind of cover up any mistakes, any splatters that do not belong anywhere, you know? So it really helps with that. Okay, so I am picking with just an ephemera, ephemera butterfly. That's basically what I'm keeping, uh, picking, 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 I can't even speak anymore, wow. And I am also called picking a sentiment. Now, I don't know if you know that I have an Etsy store and I actually have um, printable sentiments, downloadable printable sentiments that you can actually, you know, cut and download. So you can, there's like different, I mean, this is already cut, but you can print them and, and resize them into any size. So for example, let me give you an example. So you can resize them into a small, sorry, to a smaller version of it. And that way you can, um, you can actually like, you know, use them for smaller journals, for bigger journals. You can print them like much bigger, like you see like much, much bigger. So if you want to like have like different sentiments, I have like very inspirational sentiments there that are, that I don't know, I feel like they're encouraging and really nice and they're not expensive. They come with a few sheets of paper. So if you want to check them out, I also have some downloadable printables as well there. So yeah, let me just grab a little bit. I'm gonna glue this also with gel medium, okay? So yeah. Okay. Okay, and this one, I'm just, I'm, I kept it really simple because this was such an intricate design that I honestly um, did not, oops, did not want to add anything else to it. Like I didn't think that it needs like a lot of uh, like, you know, more designs and more things to it. So that's why I kept it so simple. And it's just basically a simple kind of encouraging thing that says, keep moving forward. I feel like that's really something that I do a lot. Like, you know, sometimes I get stuck in things and I just feel like, you know, it's okay. You know, it's okay to take coffee breaks. That's what I call it. My friend and I call it coffee breaks. But whenever you're taking a coffee break, keep moving forward, even if it's in one little part of your life. And that's okay. And get inspired by um, your artwork. And if you are stuck in your artwork, then definitely, you know, check out my class. And uh, like I said, the spiritual, the spiritual and transcendence class for art. And I'm, as I said, I think I showed you already just to re re tell you again about the deck of cards that I've made with all the inspirational things that you could just grab and create whenever you need it and grab a card and create whenever you need to. And it's really important to just kind of connect to that creativity and to that um, love of art. And on those times that you can't, then you have that inspiration to do so. And look, even your hands can be an inspiration. Look how beautiful my hands are. I love it. I don't even want to wash them. I want to just take a picture of them. You know, it's like, it's just something so beautiful. So I hope I inspired you today. I hope that you found something helpful, not only in the techniques, but also in how you can connect this to your, to tell your own story. I included my grandmother's doilies in this. So it's something that is part of me and part of my story. And you can go ahead and incorporate something as part of your story. It could be lace. It could be basically anything. So thank you so much. I really love you all for coming today. And I'm really appreciative. And just uh, check out this. Check out the summit. Check out my class. And check out all the other videos. And go have fun. And I'll see you very soon in, in Tiffany's video just right here. Bye, everyone.